My Goals, Revision 1, Update 7. I guess first off, I have to acknowledge the fact that I haven't made a video in a number of months. Uh, things got pretty busy for me and I didn't really want to take time away from what I had going on. Uh, this is the first opportunity I have to actually sit down and spend some time making the video. So here I am. Uh, based on where I last left off, um, let's see here. I guess I'll just start with Midnight Absinthe. You know, over the versions of the game, they've been given out her fragments. Also, too, you could get her fragments every version of the game from the Elysian shop. And so that's what I've been doing, and I've pretty much got her to triple S. So that goal is going to be accomplished. Um, let me see here. In terms of, oh, that's right. In terms of having all the uh, weapons equipped, especially the fist weapons, uh, sweet and spicy. She was given out free to play, I believe, in the update, the next update from that I mentioned in my last video. So I was able to put a range of gauntlets on her. So this way, all my weapons are equipped still, especially my fist weapons. While I'm here, my stigmata is all equipped as well. In terms of other weapons, um, for Night Squire, instead of getting her signature weapon again, I decided to give her Oblivion Down, where the 35% bonus total damage and restores 30% faster from attacks makes a huge difference for her. And is more that because of those, uh, let's say, bonuses or weapon uh, abilities, it's more powerful than Skull and Hottie. And the reason why this was possible is because I decided to get Nebulous Duality for Phoenix and upgraded to the pre arm of Cosmic Duality, where the 19% more fire damage is more beneficial than the static flat damage that comes from the Oblivion Downs weapon active attack. And I was able to get this nebulous duality, ugh, nebulous duality by saving the remaining Azure Crystalum that I had and converting it to uh, whatever, the, whatever this Crystalum is, lustrous, and getting it from the uh, vintage uh, BP shop when that was available, I think the last version. I was also too able to get the Zether's Lament for Astral Astrologus. So I was able to get that accomplished. And I'm currently working on getting her to Triple S. The main reason why I'm doing this is uh, you know, for her share sentience, she's my strongest damage dealer. And she's basically my equalizer. Like, you know, I've, it's like as the game progresses, I don't really plan to be building any more Valkyries. So the uh, roster that I have for, for dealing with content, let me see if I can't preset teams. The roster that I have for dealing with content you know, it's not it's not going to be a strong. So the strongest team that I have is my physical damage dealing team. So in terms of being an equalizer, if I could get this team to be as strong as possible, then even when I face uh, stages to where such as this one, where enemies take 40 percent bonus uh, damage when ignited, since I don't really have a Valkyrie that's attacks like her basic attacks and like combo or charge attacks ignite people since I'm not building a Valkyrie like that it's like I need a way to still not get knocked out of the bracket without having whatever the latest igniting fire damage dealing Valkyrie is 
And so this is where I bring in my equalizer team. Uh, sorry for the uh, background noise. Not much I can do about that. I might try to pause the video and see if it will go away. All right, it stopped. So, you know, that's what my goal is, is to use my Hersha of Sentience to, uh, team as my equalizer team, the team to help keep me, like I said, not getting knocked down to the previous bracket. Please help keep me in the, keep me in the runnings. So this way I could keep saving up crystals at the same rate that I have been for like, let's say the past number of months and dare I say past year. So, along the way of getting started Atrologist to Triple S, I'm also too doing in uh, tandem Hacks or Bunny, because I see Hacks or Bunny being the same type of character as Star Astrologist, so I'm trying to get them both to Triple S. In approximately the same time frame. Um, I guess I'm trying to think of anything else. In terms of my raid roster, I've made some changes. Like, I decided to move away from Kriegsmesser and from Yamabuki Armor. Mainly because Yama Buki armor, great buff, but she doesn't do anything. She can't really do any real damage. And the ultimate doesn't really do anything. And Kriegsmesser, I like Kriegsmesser, but it was like, I wanted to use another Valkyrie. So in those efforts, when I decided to stop using Yamabuki armor, I still needed someone who can use the Star of Eden. And this is where Haxo Bunny comes into play. Also, too, Haxo Bunny does ice damage. So that is, acts as a replacement for Kreese Master. So I was able to knock out two Valkyries with one. I was able to find a Valkyrie that could use the heavy weapon as well as an ice damage dealer. So that means uh, I started looking closer and I realized I didn't have any real fire damage. So this is where um, Blood Rose comes in. So not only does she do fire damage, she's able to use the cleaver of Shamash. Unfortunately, I just had to throw on the Charlemagne Stigmata set onto her because there is no beginner fire buffing, or I'm sorry, there's no beginner buff fire damage dealing Stigmata set. There's only damage dealing beginner Stigmata sets. So because of that, I decided just to keep her in Charlemagne. So this way, because the Charlemagne is only a gotcha acquired beginner stigmata set. And I didn't want to get rid of it. So I just put it on Blood Rose. And I'm currently working on getting Blood Rose to Triple S as well. So I'm just getting her fragments from wherever I can get it whenever they're available. The dorm supply is probably the only place where I don't because I have to actually make pulls, which might use crystals if I so choose. And I don't want to do that. So that's the changes I made to my uh, raid roster. I'm trying to see if there's... I guess the only other thing I can think of to mention is that I'm still working towards getting Hersher Sentience to Triple S. I've been, um, oh, that's right, I know what I forgot. I guess I'll get to it after this. And so I've been saving up my crystals when I last, my last video, I had something like 22,000 crystals, but now I have 66,873. So I've been saving that up. And now with this spring, uh, this uh, anniversary event, if I come here to Expo Select, it says, anniversary selection rotation begins. Anniversary Expo Select available. You are more likely to pull Spina Astra, Hershey of Flemish on and Hershey of Sentience. So because of this, I want to try to make some pulls to work on getting her centers to double S and hopefully to triple S. Also too, because of this event, there's this 
anniversary cake party where one of the tiers of this cake offer a choice of either focus supply cards, expensive supply cards, or crystals. So I'm gonna go for the expensive supply cards. So with my effort of saving crystals and getting expensive supply cards, I'm in a position because it's anniversary to where I can make a decent amount of pulls. So I'm gonna to try to do that and see how that goes. You know, I'll try, try to make a video about that. Uh, you know, I usually don't make those kinds of videos because I don't really have good fortune with these supply drops and I just don't feel like making a video <laughs> where it's like nothing happened. I don't get anything. So, but I, I'll try to make a video but it's because I'm in a position and it's her serve sentence. It's a Fuha character. I like Fuha. The other thing that I wanted to talk about was in my Stigmata sets, um, well, first, all my Stigmatas are equipped and all my weapons are equipped. So that still was able to keep that going. But getting back to what I wanted to talk about right now is the Stigmatas. I started to craft the Zorro, not craft, but acquire the Zorro Stigmata set from the exchange shop. Uh, the Zorro Stigmata set was probably the last thing I wanted to try in this game. You know, I spent a lot of time trying to other things just mainly because I had limited resources and I could only choose to do something like I have to be like be very careful with what I choose to do. And I, at the time, I didn't see a reason why I wanted to get the Zorro because after looking at it, I was like at first I was hyped up about it until I saw that the buff only lasts for five seconds. And when I saw that it's buffs only last for five seconds, I said to myself, well, you know, um, Night Squire, her buff, like when she goes into an ultimate, because I, I guess just to make sure it's clear, you can see where it says the total damage multiplied for five seconds, lowering enemy defense by 50% for five seconds. Even the skills, if I could get to a skill that has a duration, again, crit rate for five seconds and physical damage for five seconds gain. So everything's for five seconds, whereas, uh, Night Squire's ultimate, if I go to skills, I go to ultimate, it says right here, gain 30% back to you, personal activity from Ripple, blah, 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 blah. What does this say? There it is, consume 100 SP to enter burst mode for eight seconds. So I was like, man, for three seconds, like, like the bus for the Stigmata set doesn't cover the entire duration of Night Squire's ultimate duration. So I, I, was, I was like, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna pass on this right now. But I've tried every other Stigmata set that I wanted to try out of the exchange shop that I was like, all right, well, you know, I have a, a Stigmata Resonance. I've been saving that up and I've still been crafting Stigmata pieces and salvaging them. And so I decided, you know what? I got pretty close. I decided to go all the way. So I, you know, crafted more uh, when this yeah, anniversary event came, I used the focus supply cards to make some supply drops that they were giving me. And I was able to get another stigmata piece. I had another stigmata piece I was trying to save to build up towards Durak. I decided to salvage that. So after salvaging and crafting to get as much weapon stigmata resonance as soon as possible, I was able to get all three pieces of the, of the uh, Zorro stigmata set. And it's turning out that the Zorro stigmata set is working out pretty good. You know, dare I say, as good as or better than Shorter Javan, which I praised before, which is still a great Sigmata set. It's just that with this one, because the set bonuses, it works off of combo or charge attacks, I could use this for any physical damage dealer. Um, and then, of course, with the impair that it throws out, that still makes it even more beneficial for a physical damage dealer. All in one, so this way, if you, don't, if you need a team to where, let's say, really for Memorial Arena, you know, when you go to do teams and they get locked out, you might need a character, like you might have a boss in there that requires physical damage, but you already used the other team with a impaired person on it already. So having a Zaro with a capacity to impair is, is good. Well, one thing I actually forgot to talk about it was Phoenix actually. And for Phoenix, so, I'm, so I guess I'm adding this in after the video, um, is that when, uh, this is the 5.5 update, and what they did was, is that they 
gave you a option like you know uh like a stigmata piece option for spina astra they gave you that in the previous version of the game that will allow you to choose an actual gotcha piece of a stigmata set for free and so i'm trying to see if i any of the news where they gave that out Uh, there it is. Login to claim the new S Ranker Stigmata option voucher. So, this is what they gave us in the previous version. Grab new S Rank Battle Smears recommended Stigma option for free early. Open the summon to choose any piece from the set recommended for Spina Astera. So, they gave that to us. And so, I was able to choose a Stigmata piece, or, and not me, but everyone was able to choose a Stigmata piece. And it turns out that the top piece that they gave out, like for that Stigmata set, for Spina Astra, the top piece turned out to be a very good fire damage dealing Stigmata piece. You know, total damage increases by 25%. Combo and charge attacks boost host fire damage by 40% for 10 seconds, triggering it again, resets the duration. Well, that's all that Phoenix does. So I had the three piece low and Hulk and I decided to just go ahead and scratch the three piece uh, stigmata set bonus for that because in this one it just gives you damage reduction and so at least when it's not on durandal so i was like well i don't really need that i'll just take this and get more fire damage so this has turned out to be a very good very good stigmata top piece the other pieces in the set become more specific to charge attacks and to, I guess, Spina Astra and stuff. So I was like, ah. But I decided to keep the top and salvage the Lowenhope top for the uh, Stigmata Resonance. I was going to salvage this because I was like, ah, I don't really care. But then I, I'm glad I took the time to read to see what it does first. So, so that turned out to be pretty good. And so that's that's pretty much where I am as far as like my goals with Visual One Update Seven. That's pretty much, you know, pretty much this update. Uh, the only thing left I can think of to do is to do some discussion. And uh, there are basically two areas of the game where I want to do discussion about, and that's the uh, Pulse Honkai Odyssey Two update. I gotta say, what they've done here, they've raised the they've raised the bar. And you know, I re, you know I remember playing the open world and I criticized it, but this opposed Honkai Odyssey two. I mean, there's just the graphics, like the shader and the reflecting that they're doing, like the quality of like just like the lighting. And even the characters, it feels more like a PC game or like a regular open world, like an MMORPG, like the way that they move and little things that they do. It's like they're bringing the quality or the level of production quality that's in Genshin Impact to this Opposed Honkai Odyssey 2. And I gotta say that I like it. Even when I go into the open world, that was probably the biggest thing I noticed was that it's, it's, it reminds me more of Genshin Impact than in the previous incarnations of Open World for Honkai Impact III. And I think that's a good direction to go. Like it's very expansive, lots of nooks and crannies for you to go around and explore. The graphics are good, the audio is good. The way the characters move around and do things. You know, it's... It's done really well. There are some nice jumping puzzles in here or places you could try to jump around or reach. I mean, I gotta say, it's all done done very well. Um The other thing is this uh limited time offer co-op. Um, I gotta say, mob sweep, do an auto match. 
It's like the gameplay for this limited time offer co-op. Like the speed at which the fluid, the fluidity of the graphics, the fluidity of the movements. Like when I say graphics, like the fluidity of how it's rendered, it's rendered at a very fast frame per second. The fluidity of the, all the animation. Uh, the fact that everyone's playing together, even though you're just playing against the environment, you're not playing against each other. It just reminded me a lot of of Super of Super Smash Brothers for Nintendo. <laughs> Because everyone's just fighting, doing their own thing, casting their own ultimates, and it's all happening on your screen. If anything, if there's, I, I, I'm not even thinking. I'm just, I'm trying to talk and fight, and it's not going well. But if anything, this, what this reminds me of, really, in terms of just Hong Kong Effect the Third, is that as how the bounties used to be. You know, before it would be all three of you and you would just go in and you'll just fight whatever the enemy combination is. It wasn't all this, oh, you need an ice damage dealer. You need a, 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 a lightning damage dealer. You just jump in and you just play with whatever comes your way. None of this level one, level two, level six and all this other stuff. Oh, it's not doing it. Oh, lag. The ultimate game boss, lag. It's like, you know, because there's another game mode where you can actually go out of the map. In this one, you can't do it, but the other one, you can go out of the map. And that's where the Super Smash Brothers really has that feel when it comes in. Oh. That's pretty cool. It's fast paced, it's frantic, it's fluid. I dig it. Everybody gets a light. I guess I'll try to hop into this one. This is the one where you could go. Where you can go out of the map. Hopefully someone else will join. <clears throat> While I wait, I'll snack on some pistachios. There we go. So you could go out of the map. The cool thing is, is that if you go out of the map, you can still do like attacking and stuff. And still bring yourself back in, kind of like Super Smash Brothers. See, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to demonstrate it. See, I'm out of the map. <laughs> I'm still attacking. If someone is able to see it, if someone is able to bring me in. <laughs> 
If someone's able to. Uh... <laughs> From under the map. And I'm still attacking. Here we go. It brought me back in. <laughs> okay. See, that's the part that's cool. I'm tapping the screen. It's pretty cool. <laughs> but this game mode, it's a, it's a hint towards, I will say, positive things that to come. Ah, I've got two votes. Awesome. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. I guess the uh, other thing that I wanted to talk about is this uh, new, you know, gameplay called Arahato. And it's like a mixture of Tetris, Puzzle, Minecraft, real-time strategy, and turn-based fighting. <laughs> Cause see the way it works is, you know, you have to build that you could build, uh, you could, ugh. you can build buildings or build units. These units are shaped in like little kind of like Tetris like style blocks. Like you have to build them in that shape and that pattern with the right box in order to get them to match and to build the actual unit. So in this particular case, oh, is it paused? I'm supposed to click on something. So in this particular case, you know, I'm supposed to build. I have to get these turrets active for this for this map. The one of the challenges is to get the turrets active. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is, you know, put together the units. I also too have to build um, a dorm so as to bring out the Valkyrie that can charge up the units. And I have to build it following the pattern that I see here on the left. Each of the buildings that you can get to build, they have, they provide different, like, you know, features or stat increases to the Valkyries that come onto the field after you build certain units and so on. And they all play together. So this is where it's like the real time strategy comes in. It's because you have to think about as the blocks are being given to you, you have to decide how to best use those blocks. In terms of Minecraft, just for the fact that you're using blocks to build stuff, that's where it feels like Minecraft. Um, in terms of Tetris, because you have to build according to the specific shapes, that's where it feels like Tetris. In terms of the turn-based fighting, uh, you'll see that once there are some enemies that come onto the screen. Right now, then none of the battles have started yet. I'm still trying to build out units and stuff uh, so it's see here's the turn-based battle you don't actually get to command them but this is happening and you could choose to skip the battle if you want so it has like a very how can i say this abbreviated aspects of other games incorporated into this so it's a good, it's like a good way to like pass time 
and engage yourself without having to have the full-blown commitment of of a, like of, of a game that's focused solo on the aspects. You don't have to play. You don't. You're not forced to endure a full-on turn-based, you know, type of combat. You're not. In, you know. You're not. You're not having to endure a full-on building of like Minecraft-like style of gameplay. The real-time strategy is not so intense where you sit around having to you know, micromanage and macromanage all your resources. And it just really boils down to you trying to complete the objectives this way you could get all of the rewards for the clearing the stage and trying to figure out how to best do that with the layout of the map. So it's more of a, a brain, a brain game with hints of all the other thing, cool things. So I got to say, it's a, it's a good addition. I wasn't really feeling it at first, but after giving it a shot and see, those are the rewards. I skipped past it really quick, but these are the rewards you can get for clearing the stage. You get more of that. So this way you could go to the shop and, and you know, get reward items whatever you're interested in. In this game mode, they also do have a talent page. This way you can upgrade talents to help you experience the gameplay a little bit better. I say a little bit better when I'm trying to say to make the gameplay of the stages that they can become more difficult, easier. And that's um, pretty much all the things I wanted to talk about. In terms of my goals, revision one, update seven, and the things I want to discuss about the game. So far, this version 5.5 update, it's uh, pretty cool. Oh, I know what I forgot. Uh, I know what I forgot. I wanted to talk about these new Valkyries that come out with or like the visual effects. I talked about it in a post Honkai Odyssey too, but it exists in these new uh, batch of Valkyries. This is not in the trial play. I have to actually come here. It's like the visual effects that they're doing. It's, they're raising it up. It's like the type of visual quality I've come in like, let's say cinematic to uh, cinematic like touch to when the characters are pulling off their moves, what I've come like, what I've become accustomed to seeing on PC, they're stepping closer and closer in this direction in Honkai Impact the Third. And I gotta say, when I look at like the, uh, like the graphics for the ultimate for this uh, Spina Asteroid character for um, Rita Rotwise or Rosswise, it's just like, it's like really well done. The lots of gradient fading on the edges of the move, so it's not hard. It's visually appealing, especially when she goes to cast her ultimate. Oh, yeah. I think this is the. So you look at the camera, how they put the pedals in front of her, and if you look at the ultimate. A mixture of purple and amber or purple and orange or something, whatever it's doing. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. And you know, it's, it's just a nice touch to, to look at it. And you know, when you look at the ultimate, it's just like... It's just like, if you look at it, it these, this, the semi-transparency to it, like the faded edges with the tornado, is you can see where the tornado 
And either the sprites that they're using or the visual effects that they're applying, it just looks really cool. And I just like that cinematic, that cinematic look when she goes to cast her ultimate. I like how they just have that set up. And this thing, you know, I, I thought it was pretty interesting to have a fire damage dealer who's not red and orange and amber based, but instead purple, orange and amber based. It's, it's interesting. It's interesting. So that was the last thing I wanted to talk about. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. Like I've already mentioned, because I like to reiterate myself. That's it for my revision one update seven from the last time I made a video and the things I wanted to discuss, such as post high, a post Honkai Odyssey two, as well as this Arahato and as well as that, uh, like the direction they're taking with the Spina Astra and like the visual quality of the ultimates and abilities. I gotta say, the music in a post Honkai Odyssey 2 is a lot, is more improved. It's, it's like lo-fi hip hop. And that is definitely, definitely a nice touch. to come here and just come there but now the chill in me wants to go back and I'll just let it fade out I'll end the video here let you guys vibe out to some a post high odyssey 2 lo-fi hip-hop lobby music peace Thank you.